good evening all of you so in today's tutorial we are going to see how to create one login form okay so in the previous class you have already seen how to create the registration form and how to link that with the database okay so in today's tutorial i'm going to show you how to create a real time login form okay and how can we validate the data from that already created database okay now so this is my project which i've created in the previous video of registration Okay, if I right click and execute this. Okay, so this was a registration form I just created with the help of tkinter. Okay, and whatever data I'm entering here, let's say I'm entering like uh, Peter. Okay, password Peter four, five, six, and let's say email is peter at the rate gmail.com. Okay. Once I click on the register button, it should be displaying what registered successfully. See registered successfully. Okay. Now, whatever details I've given here should be stored in which database register underscore DB database. So I'll be opening my, my SQL first. Okay. I'll enter the password. <coughs> now I'll be typing here uh show databases sorry our database name is register underscore db so i'll be directly writing there use register underscore db semicolon okay now i'll be writing there uh our table name is registration right so i'll be writing select star from registration semicolon okay i made a mistake right Okay, select star from registration. So yesterday, like in the previous class, you have already added two persons details using login form or registration form. Today, we have also added one more guy's details like Peter. Okay, now my requirement is to create a login form. Okay, to create a login form. Now, all of you know what login form contains of or consists of. It consists of only two fields, username and password. Username and password. Okay, one field for username, another field for password. And here we need what login button. We need a login button. <clears throat> okay, so now whatever username and password I'm entering here. Whatever username and password I'm entering here. Okay. And whenever I click on the login button, whenever I click on the login button, then this username password should be collected from the login form and it should be checked into the registration table of database. Okay. It should be checked whether the same username and password is present in the registration table or not. If it is present, then only it should display logged in successful or it's invalid login. And if his details are present, then only his details should be storing in a separate table of login into a separate table of login clear. Okay. So today I'm going to show you how to create the login form and how to validate it, use it using my SQL. Okay. <coughs> so let's quickly create the login form. I'll just wipe out this. Okay. So now let's create the login form. So as usual, I'm importing my tkinter module from tkinter import star along with that i'll write here import tkinter dot message box as msg okay because i'm going to use message box in my programs i'm importing it now only i'll be writing root equals to tk to create the page to create the page okay now next i'll be writing root dot main loop root dot main loop so this will create the window already are aware of that. Okay. Now we'll be writing root dot title to change the title of the window. Let's take login form as the title. Next I'll be writing root dot geometry. Okay. Let's say the size is 400 into 400. I think 300 is more than enough because we are creating login form now. Yes. Now I'll be writing root dot config. This is used to add some colors and all to your window. I'll be writing BG equals to, let's say the color is powder blue. The background color is powder blue. So now if you right click and execute the file, see. 
you can see we're getting a window with the title login form with the size 300 width, 300 height and the background color as powder blue. Okay, now we need to only enter what labels, username, password and entry boxes. So let's create the labels also. <coughs> I'll be writing here username underscore label equals to label attribute. L should be capital. Starting letter L should be capital. Where are you sending it to root? Where are you sending it to root? Where text equals to user name. Text is username. I want the same background color also. So I'll be writing BG equals to powder blue. Okay, next I'll be writing here font equals to bold type and 20. Okay, now if I right click and run, can I see that username on my screen on my window? No, because we need to place it at a particular X axis and Y axis, right? So I'll be writing here username underscore label dot place username underscore label dot place where x equals to 20 and y equals to 50. Okay, right click and run the command. You got username. Okay, so we'll do one thing. I think font is quite big there. Size is quite big. We'll write here 15. That will be more than enough. Okay, right click and run. Check the size. Correct. Okay, now let's create the same text for password also. So I'll be writing here in the next line password underscore label equals to label attribute. Okay. Again, the first letter L should be capital in label. Where are we sending it to root? That is our homepage. What should be the text? The text should be login. Sorry. The text should be password. Very sorry. <coughs> Next background should be what powder blue. Okay. Font should be how much it should be bold type and the size should be 15. Now I'll be writing password underscore label dot place where X equals to 20 and Y equals to let's say 150. Okay. So right click and run it. So we got username and password labels on the window. Now we need to create what entry boxes. So let's quickly create the entry boxes. I'll be writing you name underscore entry. Your name basically stands for username, short form. Okay. Which attribute? Entry attribute. An entry attribute, the first letter E is capital. Now we'll be writing you name underscore entry dot place. You name underscore entry dot place, where x equals to 150 and y equals to 50. <coughs> x should be double or some more than the previous x axis, and y axis should be same. Check it. See, we are getting it. In the same way, we'll create entry box for password also. So we'll write here, password underscore entry equals to entry attribute, E capital. We'll writing password underscore entry dot place, where X equals to 150 or Y equals to, uh, let's say 150. Check it. Okay, so we have entry boxes for username and password both. Now we need to create what login page or oh, sorry, login button. Okay, we need to create one login button. So I'll be writing here login underscore button equals to button attribute. Okay, where are we sending it to root? Where text of the button should be login. Okay, now we'll write here login underscore button dot place where X equals to 130 and Y equals to 250. Right click and run. So getting the login button here. Okay. So by this, the front end layout is ready. Our login form is ready. We need to only validate this with our MySQL database. We need to only validate this with MySQL database and it only linked them both. Okay. So how to do it? Let's see it. All of you. So we'll go back to PyCharm. Okay. On the top after the root.config, we'll create one function def validate. Let's keep the function name as validate. So as usual, I'm going to work with my SQL connectivity part that is import my SQL dot connector. Okay. I'll be writing my DB equals to my SQL dot connector dot connect where host is home local host. Okay, 
Uh, next we have port. What is the port number? We have double three zero six. Next we have user, and the user is root. Next we have password. What is the password? Root. Okay, next, what do we have database that is what register underscore DB always remember the database name. Okay, where you're working with. So my database name is register underscore DB, which I've created previously at the time of working with registration form concept. Okay, now I'll be writing here in the next line, my cursor equals to my DB dot cursor my db dot cursor okay now i'll be calling my both the entry boxes on the top okay i'll be calling my both the entry boxes on the top okay so my first entry box name is uname underscore entry and my second entry box name is password underscore entry so i'll be calling both of them on the top okay i'll be writing here username equals to uname underscore entry dot get so this get method will take the data from the entry box of username and show it into the username variable. I'll be writing password equals to password underscore entry dot get. The same way password entry box will get the data from the password entry box and store it into the password variable. Now I'll be writing here my cursor dot execute my cursor dot execute. I'm not going to write insert query because right now I'm not inserting. Now, before writing any insert query or any other query here, just make sure that you're creating one table for login also. Like we have created one table for registration to store all the registration data. In the same way, we need to create one table for login also. So right now, I did not create any table. I'll be writing here, create table. Okay, one more thing. Suppose you don't know how many tables are there in a database. You forgot how many tables you created. Now, how to remember them, how to get back to it, see. We have a command called show space tables ending with semicolon show tables. If you press enter, it will display. This is the only table present in this database. This is the only table present in the database taking registration data. Okay. So now we should create which table login table. So we'll be writing here, create table table name. What should be the table name login? A table name should be login. And here I'm going to create only two columns, username, and that is which type of data varchar, which takes hundred characters. And next is password. Again, that is varchar. Let's take it is taking only ten characters. Okay, close that and end with semicolon. Press enter, and the table login will be created. Okay, that's it. Now come back to the PyCharm screen, and here in my cursor dot execute, I'll be writing which query select query. Which query select because I want to only select what I want to only select username and password from registration table. Okay. I want to select only username and password from registration table. I want only two columns from that. So for that purpose, I'm using select query, select star from registration, select star from registration table where username equals to percentile S and sorry, username equals to percentile S and password equals to percentile list. Now, all of you remember this command select star from registration means what display the content of the registration table, but you're saying what where username equals to percentile s and password equals to percentile s means if I'm passing a username and password here. Okay, if that username and password is present in the database, if the username and password is present in this table, then only select query will execute. Okay, whatever username password I'm giving in the login form, if that is present in the registration table, then only select query will execute. Clear all of you. Now, after the double quotes, I'll be writing here comma. Okay, what is the value of first percentile as username and the value of second percentile is password. Okay, now, so whatever username password is there will come and store in which variable my cursor variable, which variable my cursor. Now, what will I do is I'll be writing here C equal to zero. I'll take one variable C equal to zero and I'll be writing for I in my cursor for I in my cursor. Okay. Means if there is any username and password given in the login form that is matching the registration table, then it will come in this for loop and what will happen? The C value will increment. Okay. C value was zero. Now it will become one. I'll repeat again. See, because of this, my cursor dot execute. 
we are writing a query called select query select start from registration table where username equals to percentile less and password equal to percentile less now suppose i'm giving the username as john so here what is the username value john i'm giving password as one two three four so what is password value one two three four so let's take an example that that username and password is present in registration table so what will happen only that username and password will be brought into the my cursor variable that will be brought into the my cursor variable <coughs> okay now at the time of entering the same username and password in login form okay i'm checking here for i in my cursor means if that same username and password is present in my cursor c value will increment from zero it will become one okay now uh, it, below to the for loop will write if c greater than or equal to one if c greater than or equal to one means if c value is greater than or equal to one it should do what it should write here my cursor dot execute again my cursor dot execute insert into login means if c value is greater than or equal to one the person is said to be logged in if c value is greater than or equal to one the person is said to be logged in okay so here i'll be writing my cursor dot execute insert into login table what do you want to insert values how many values only two values so two percent ls only and what is the value of the two percent ls first one is username second one is password okay and at the end we'll write my db dot commit okay and after this we'll be writing msu dot show info title is what login and content is what logged in successfully clear so if your username and password passed in the login form if it is present in my cursor my cursor is taking the same username and password from registration table if both are matching c value will increment from zero it will become one if c value is greater than or equal to one that particular username and password will be added into login table and display what logged in successfully sir what if the username and password is not present it will go to the else block it will go to the else block and we'll write here msg dot show error Okay, we should display an error message. Login is the title of the window and the message is invalid login. Invalid login. Clear? That's it. Okay, now the only pending part is we should be giving this function name to the button. So what is the function name? Validate. What is the function name? Validate. We'll go down. We have a login button, right? At the end, we'll write command. Command equals to what is the function name? Validate. That's it. And your program is ready. Okay. So right click and run the program. Now suppose I'm writing here a username as John and password as one, two, three, four. Now what will happen is C. This username uh, variable value becomes what John. Okay. This is the username variable value and password becomes one, two, three, four. Now you're saying what select star from one minute. You're saying what select star from registration where username equals to percentile less and password equals to percentile less. What is username value? John. What is password value? John. Means if these two username and password are present in the registration table, bring them out and store in my cursor. Okay. Now that same I value, I value is giving representation of John and password like username and password. So now this is present in my cursor okay i is getting referred to this username and password only i is giving reference to this username and password only if that username and password is present in my cursor c value will increment if it is incrementing john is said to be a logged in user check it click on login and check it logged in successfully logged in successfully now go to the mysql okay and write here select star from login table because like we said if the person is a valid user then his details will be stored in the login table see username is john password is one two three four now suppose i'm giving a wrong name i'm giving that tom and password is one two three four first of all there is no username with the name tom so what will happen invalid login and it will uh, will it uh, display or will it store the data in the login table no you can write the select command and check it see it is only storing john's details so in this way, you can connect login form with my SQL. Okay. If you're understanding this part till here. Okay. So by this, we have also seen how to create the login form using my SQL. Okay. So thanks for watching this uh, video.
okay i hope you enjoyed it bye everyone